What's up, my fellow peeps of the interweb? Uh, welcome, everybody. So today I would like to talk about um, some of my favorite microcontrollers, uh, mostly mostly ones that I've been using the past year or so, uh, and and mostly of the flavor of Wi-Fi enabled, you know, ESP type of chips, um, or sorry, microcontrollers. Um, however, before we go there, I just wanted to sort of call out. You know, it's mid-February, typically time of the year when <clears throat> we're stuck indoors, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, we're stuck indoors and, uh, you know, it can be cold out there. And for those that don't spend much time outside, it can be pretty depressing. Um, I want to encourage you guys, get out, get outside, even if it's, out, you know, even if it's out front of your place for a breath of fresh air, um, you know, get out for a hike, whatever you can do, get out there. Um, you know, after this, I'm going to head out for a fat bike ride in the snow. Uh, we just got snow yesterday, so I'm looking forward to, you know, getting a good workout in that. So you got to make sure you balance things, um, you know, balance your, your lifestyle um, with this indoor and outdoor stuff because it can get kind of trying at times. Anyway, <clears throat> let's shelve that now. So um, a bit of a baseline again, you know, there's a ton of microcontrollers out there for doing, you know, um, various, you know, the Arduino world of microcontrollers. Um, you know, there, there's many other areas like MicroPython and um, whatnot, but my focus here is going to be, you know, I use basically the Arduino IDE um, solely for my work. It's just easy. I've done it for many years and, you know, uh, it, it serves my needs. So this this is going to really be talking about a number of microcontrollers that I like. There are many out there. There are many that might be better, but these are the ones I've used. Um, some of them have been given to me. Some of them I bought myself. Um, but you know, I've, I've used them for, for various projects and I will, you know, put a link in, in my, um, I'll put a link down below of, of some of the projects that I've done with these various controllers, um, as well as a link to where you can pick them up. Um, it's not going to be an end to end review. You know, there are plenty of, of, uh, there's plenty of documentation out there, uh, for you to get, uh, details and specs, but I'm going to kind of list some of the key high level things, especially things that I look for. Um, and I'll try to give you some pluses and minuses of each one, things I like and I don't like. Again, this is my opinion, but, um, you know, it's based on experience. So um, anyway, got a whole mismatch of stuff here. So um, we're going to start with, and I know you've probably been watching this for a while there. Uh, this is the TTGO uh, T-Display, so I'll talk about that one a little later, but uh, I'm pretty impressed with that guy. Um, the very first one I'll start with is the Seed uh, Wio Terminal. Uh, I was actually sent this by uh, the Seed Gang uh, to try out. Uh, it's it's a pretty impressive uh, little unit. Sorry, bear with me. Just shuffling my power supply here. Um, a pretty impressive little unit. Um, it's based on uh, SAMD uh, Core 120 megahertz. Uh, it's got uh, Realtek Wi-Fi, uh, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And obviously it uses USB-C um, to connect. Uh, it, it's quite versatile. I, you know, I, I've only used it for one or two projects, uh, but it's got a crap load of, um, uh, of UI uh, control, but it's got this cool little joystick on the front here that um, you can use to control things. You know, I'm using it right now to change the number of minutes, um, but it's up, down, left, right, and actually a click um, that actually you can use with your interface. Um, it's got... Uh, essentially, you know, two control ports or output ports. Uh, it's kind of like the M5 stack groove port of sorts. It's a four pin port uh, that you can use for their other peripherals just to directly connect. Um, it's got microphone, the joystick again, as I said, it's got these three buttons on the top here. Uh, it's got power button and actually a reset button, micro SD card slot. Uh, it's uh, also, sorry, that is not the micro SD card slot. I believe this is the actual micro SD card slot. Uh, it's also got a uh, Raspberry Pi compatible, uh, a GPIO pinout, um, double, you know, dual uh, row. Um, so, sorry, that is the micro SD card slot. You can see it right there. Uh, that, I think it, I forget, but I believe it may be related to the microphone or some other sort of input. Um, it's got, uh, I think it's M2 screw terminals as well, so you can actually screw it, uh, you know, onto your project. As all as these four uh, pads actually double as, as magnets so you can actually stick this to a surface and have it just uh, stay on I've actually used this on my resin curing station project again I'll link that down below so you can just see more about how it's being used um, anyway I like it um, it's it's really easy to use 
I think the, the main beef I had with this was, and, and again, I'll admit that I, I've only really used it once, uh, once or twice in, in my developments, but Seed has, and they've done a great job of this, but Seed has basically pulled all libraries into their own master library. So, you know, if you're a fan of TFT, um, uh, sorry, TFT ESPI for, you know, display graphics, which I've actually used here and in, in, in most of my projects, you know, you've got to use the version they include in their, their actual build uh, for the entire uh, set of core files for their uh, microcontroller, um, for, for the SMD microcontroller that they've used. And, and honestly, it's a bit of a pain. You know, I'm very used, especially since I jump between many projects here, I'm very used to being able to easily switch between projects. You know, as you probably know, if you've used TT, TFT ESPI, you've got to jump into the actual library itself to make some config changes for the type of display you have. But it's really easy to do, and it's really easy to, to document and flip back and forth for each project you do. I like it that way. I don't want to have multiple libraries that I have to think about where they exist and why it won't compile properly. Uh, I had many issues with, with, with compiling this with conflicts with other common libraries I use for all my other projects. Uh, it's the only microcontroller that I've had that problem with over the, all the rest of these. So with that, it's, it's you know, I, I really take off uh, a significant, um, you know, fan point, so to say, for this this actual controller. I, I think they're, they, they took, they were very open, open to feedback. I gave them feedback. Hopefully they'll adapt and, and modify over time and make that better. It's a great microcontroller for somebody that's just starting out and they haven't got any of this and they're looking for something to do, you know, um, do a number of things. And <laughs> the biggest thing I missed was that it's got a display. Uh, it's not touchscreen, but it's a beautiful display um, for, uh, you know, displaying uh, uh, any kind of project work. It's, it's um, very nice resolution. Uh, I really like that. And, you know, I found it very useful for those kind of projects where you're like, you know, well, I've got to pull in a microcontroller and some sensors and a display, and I've got to hook it all up and solder it all up and then program and, and, and identify all those pieces for the libraries. Where in this case, you know, obviously it's all um, built together for you. And all you got to do is, is configure the right setup in, in your library and start writing code. And you've got an all-in-one project. Um, and I, I'll, I'll note that in, you know, up here, where I've done that, I built my own, uh, you know, display controller for my Lulzbot Mini uh, 2 3D printer, where I had to integrate, you know, a separate um, display and microcontroller and other bits and pieces. And it just took a lot more time, whereas I could have technically just used this guy and broke out uh, the necessary pins, um, you know, control, control GPIO pins to the sensors I was using in that project. Again, I'll link that um, down below, actually. Anyway, so that guy, um, uh, nice, but uh, has its has its flaws. So let's set that aside. Um, the next one I wanna to talk to you about was uh, the M5 Stack Atom Light. This little sucker, it's tiny. Um, I bought this, uh, as I did a, a few others I'll show you here, what, you know, I often uh, will do tiny projects, small projects where I want a small microcontroller. It doesn't need to have a lot of functionality. Um, but I just want, you know, Wi-Fi enabled uh, microcontroller I can use um, to to control those things. And, you know, here's an example of it. I'm sort of in the midst of building a tiny tank unit. I've resin printed the entire body, um, mounted some, uh, I think they're called G20 motors, gear motors, basically, in a motor controller. Uh, and the idea was that, you know, drop that microcontroller in there, or at least on top of a battery, and you've got an all-in-one, you know, rover robot. Um, uh, so anyway, you know, that was the intent, uh, of, of using this as well as some other projects I do. We just want to, I, I, you know, it's an ESP 32, so it's powerful CPU. Uh, it's got lots of Ram, uh, it has Wi-Fi um, and Bluetooth, obviously 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, USB-C. It's got their, uh, groove port. Uh, again, it's a four pin port. Sorry, it's a bit blurry. You probably can't see that very well. Try to refocus it here. Um, you know, it's got a groove port, uh, it's got an RGB LED, sorry, I think that's on here, just above my fingernail, as well as this whole uh, area in the back is a push button, so you have programmable push button. Uh, again, as I mentioned, it's got groove. It says it's, it has infrared, I believe that's this tiny little port right here, but I'm not positive about that. I think the only beef I have with this guy, sorry, there's a button there too, push button on the side. The only real beef I have with this is the lack of 
uh, lack of pins available for breaking out for other projects. It's very lean on that and you know I couldn't actually use it for this because I need uh, numerous pins for you know controlling two motors uh, on a motor driver, a dual H-bridge motor driver. Uh, so you know you're limited there right and what you can do if you really need a lot of pins but if you're doing something simple you know you want to have a low powered uh, Wi-Fi enabled project uh, that you know uh, uses the sleep function of the MCU and you have batteries lasting for years. This is a great little um, MCU for that purpose. Uh, the next one I want to talk to you about is the M5 Stick C+. Um, I originally picked this up uh, because I wanted to use it for, and you can barely see it here off my, my GoPro um, uh, camera slider for my resin printer. The idea is to take time-lapse photos. Um, so I originally bought it for that purpose, um, but I had some issues with, um, again, pinouts. It, I was originally using it to drive, a again, another one of these motors. Um, to, to move the camera along the rail here. You see here off to the side of the picture. Uh, but the problem was is it wasn't step enabled, right? I was just really guessing on moving the motor and I couldn't really get precision in how many steps I could move uh, the camera. And I needed that because I wanted to be able to control the number of frames matches essentially the number of print layers. I wanted to control that precisely so I knew exactly uh, how long a distance I would have to move the camera. Anyway, long story short, it, it didn't work out for everything I needed. Um, but I was able to, you know, again, using uh, TFT ESPI, build a display um, on this, you know, tiny little screen. Uh, it has buttons to make choices and whatnot uh, and display the actual status of the project. Um, I really like this. Again, ESP32, um, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Uh, it's USB-C. It has their own, again, groove port, uh, four pin external port. I use this actually to talk to the actual photoresistor sensor. Uh, that is actually mounted in the printer. Um, it's got, uh, I guess one of its limits are, it's, it's, it's limited again, number of the output pins. Uh, so I mean, let me back up. It's got, you know, a push button on the top here. This is the power off and on button. There's actually a button on the side. And actually, as you can see, the best part is it's got a tiny LiPo uh, battery built in. So it's self powered, <clears throat> again, for small projects uh, that are low battery use. It's a great little device. Um, Again, I don't, know, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it has infrared, uh, the groove port, as I mentioned. And then <clears throat> it does have this breakout for a number of um, pins, including ground five volts. Um, it's got four GPIO pins, but you can only use three of them because uh, 36 and 25 are shared, uh, as noted right here. So you've got to just do a little bit of artistry in your code to um, pull uh, one of those high um, um Sorry, floating. Make one of those floating so you can use the other. So there are some limits, and that was one of my challenges. I could, you know, I only had those available pinouts plus one of the the two that were available um, in the groove port, and it wasn't enough for me to do, you know, precise motor control uh, that I needed to do with a stepper motor that I have in this this project that I'll show you later. Uh, anyway. Um, but I really like this. Um, the idea of it has an IPS display in it and. And um, you know, it, it really crisp, clear graphics, and it's tiny, as you can see, right? So um, I'm really impressed with that guy, and I'll use that for other projects, and I recommend this guy. It also has, um, I think, they're M2 screws, so you can do mounting to to other, um, your, you know, you can you don't have to, to glue it, so to say, you can just have it screw and unscrew to whatever um, project box or, or mechanism or mechanism you have to to display the unit. So that leads me to this guy, which you've probably been wondering all this time about this. This is the TTGO T display. Uh, it is also uh, by Lilygo. It's an ESP32, 240 megahertz dual core CPU. Uh, as you can see, it comes with a nice IPS display. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, uh, and BLE built in. Uh, that display is a ST7789 1.14 inch um, IPS display, and it's got either four or 16 megabyte of flash. This one's a four megabyte flash. For the most part, I, I don't really ever use um, a lot of the flash. Like even this, this animated graphic I have going here was only, I think only about two megabytes in total with about 60 frames to make it. So, um, and that's, I'm just demoing my, my new um, Plastibots introduction uh, um, animated GIF that I use in some of my projects that have displays. Um, again, as you can see, it's got USB-C built in. Uh, this case, I actually resin printed. Um, it's got Lego mounts, so I can mount it to that guy over there. 
which you can barely see, but it's the, I'll, I'll link my project for this, but it's the GoPro slider uh, with a stepper motor here that uh, controls uh, taking time-lapse photos. So I, I don't have um, anything but the animated graphic running, but you can see here it's got two buttons, um, you know, for, for controlling <clears throat> your project. So similar to what I showed you here, I have the actually exact same interface on here that you see here. And I use these two buttons to control um, the selection and the options for that interface to actually control the slider. Um, so I really like this unit, the TTGO. I, I, I just bought it um, but a couple weeks ago and I really like it. Um, you know, it's, it's quite impressive. It has a lot of features, uh, um, you know, lots of pinouts, even though it's using many of those pinouts for the display, uh, there's still a lot available. So I was able to, you know, pull out, uh, I think I've got five here, including power and ground. Uh, for the motor controller uh, and then there's still more to spare for um, you can see the white cable here that's for the sensor input uh, the photoresistor and there's still available pins for other projects as well so it's powerful um, again it's pretty small I don't have you know, it's about it's a bit smaller than this guy here uh, I really like that so I'm going to use that for a lot more of my projects uh, price of that guy I sorry I haven't been noting prices but prices of the TTGO uh, run you at $18 US um, this guy runs about $20, again, depending where you buy it from. This guy runs you about eight bucks US. Uh, this is about $36. So moving along, um, going to some really tiny stuff here. So this is, there's two here. I'm gonna pull up this guy first. This is the M5 Stamp Pico. Um, it is tiny, as you can see. Uh, I haven't used this much, but it's uh, based on an Extensa 32-bit, 32-bit, 240 megahertz um, microprocessor. It's got, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and BLE as well. Uh, it has lots of GPIOs uh, in it. So, I mean, for its size, it's quite amazing. Um, I can barely read this, but there's a, you know, a couple grounds, a 5-volt, 3.3-volt, and then a number of GPL pins on this side and a number of GPL pins on this side. Um, you know, they, they try to cram. These guys are really good at cramming as much as they can into these tiny little things. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just powerful for what it is and its size. I think the intent is for, again, small projects, low power projects. Um, it also, you can see here, it has the ability to, if you want it up, you know, you can unscrew this tiny uh, mounting screw and pull this cap off uh, that, that has all the labeling on it and get at the main board to make it even, you know, smaller, shorter. Uh, then you see here, it's got the groove port as well. So you can use their external groove, um, uh, devices as well. I think the only, uh, issue of this one is that you need an external programmer, right? You have to, um, either have like a serial programmer, uh, or you can use another ESP, um, uh, and just connect to the TX and RX pins and, you know, program it that way. It's not impossible. It's just, we've gotten so used to having, you know, built in programming and other devices that, uh, even though this is simple, it's a bit painful, right, to have to do. But uh, that said, I, I haven't used this yet, but I'm looking forward to it uh, for small projects. So um, it's more to come on that later on in my blog. Moving on to the next guy. Oh, that is uh, runs you about $16 US. Now, this is the big brother. This is the M5, uh, uh, M5 Stamp C3. So very much like uh, the Pico, a little bit bigger. Uh, but it has, uh, the biggest thing is it has more pens and it has the built-in programmer, uh, the USB-C programming in it. So you don't have to worry about external programming. Um, this guy here is um, based on uh, Expressive. It's ESP32C3, ESP 160 megahertz. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0 uh, with BLE, uh, four megabytes of flash. Oops, my bad. Um, four, megs, four megs of flash, it has can barely see me doing here, but it does have a push button. Uh, there is a push button there. It's not the easiest to use, but it is there. Uh, there is an RGB LED built in. Uh, where the hell is it? It's, um, I think it's hiding under the sticker, but I think you can actually see it um, come through the sticker. They, they, you can't see it here very well, but I think there's some clear area. Uh, there's a clear area on this, but I'll pop a picture up and you can see that as well. Uh, what else does it have? Um, 13 GPIO pins. Uh, there's an M2 screw behind this that you can use to mount it uh, or actually, you know, keep the actual, uh, the, the cover plate. And as I mentioned too, they both have this. I, I like their, you know, their um, approach for one, making these things look good. Two is for protecting, you know, the board. If you're building a project and you've got things exposed or wearing, you know, multiple sensors and wearing, 
you don't really want things touching uh, the main board. You want to keep them away from, um, you know, the, the fine circuitry on top. So I like the idea of them building, you know, this, this plastic covering to um, protect that area and actually also give you a, an area to put the sticker over to show you what the pinouts are. One of the pains on some of these things are you can't read them anywhere, especially as you get older like me, uh, where you can't, you know, you need glasses or even a magnifying glass, quite honestly, to see some of the, the pinout references for these suckers. So uh, anyway, uh, I like this. Uh, I'm going to use this one as well. I like the fact that it's um, easy to program because it's got the built-in uh, ESP, or sorry, built-in uh, USB-C programming. This guy is a little more, it's pricier, right? It's probably one of the more pricey ones we have here. 30 bucks US. Uh, again, the price probably fluctuates. Um, some would say it's a lot to pay for what it is. Uh, maybe so. Um, but anyway, it's got um, a lot of options. So definitely something to consider. Uh, and again, being, you know, low power ESP32, you have all those, those options for IoT type of things as well as low power things. Uh, the next one I want to show you is, sorry, let me just, I'm just looking at my list here. Um, this guy. So this is one of my go-tos of early days. This is an ESP32 dev kit. Uh, this one is the Room32. Um, there's a bunch of these out there. They're, they're, if you Google this, you're going to find, you know, 10 different versions of this board. Um, but essentially they're generally based on ESP32 chip, um, which has got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, 240 megahertz, dual core. Uh, in this case, it's 80 and 240 megahertz, dual core. So it's got Wi-Fi, uh, wi 2.4 gigahertz, uh, not 5, B, uh, Bluetooth, uh, 4.2 and BLE. Um, this one has four megabytes of flash and a whack load of GPIO. Again, as I was thinking, you just, I just mentioned to you about how you can barely see, you know, the pinout references. This is one of those, even with a magnifying glass, you can barely read these, but there's a whack load of pinouts on here. Uh, it does have, you know, your typical five volt grounds, multiple uh, grounds, 3.3 uh, volt outputs. It has two buttons, you know, boot and, and, and uh, enable buttons. Um, you know, there's your, uh, your, uh, um, voltage uh, regulator uh, i think that probably is for the 3.3 volts so you get you know usb mini for five volts in and then uh, there's the esp32 chip i like these i've used this in a number of projects it's powerful um and i think the key is where projects you're using multiple pins um this is you know where you need a lot of pins a lot of the esp32 pins broken out to the board um, you know, that aren't eaten up by displays and micro SD cards. This is it, right? It's, and it's cheap. It's only, um, 15 bucks, about $15 us. So another good choice there. So I guess, um, straying from, I guess the, uh, uh, uh Straying from where I've kind of been going here is a lot of ESP 32s. This guy is really my go-to chip. This is, and I, that's why I brought it here. So this is a Node N MCU Mini. It's actually an ESP 8266. It's small. It's again, USB programming on it. Um, so it's 160 megahertz max um, CPU on it. It's got the ESP 12F um, uh, chip on it. So it's Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth. Um, sorry, my bad. This is not Bluetooth. I don't think we have Bluetooth on um, ESP8266. I need a refresher on this. Um, so it's got Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz, uh, lots of GPIOs. Um, there's actually 12 on here, uh, GPIOs. So there's only one ADC chip, uh, or sorry, ADC GPIO in here. Four megabytes of flash. Uh, it's also got breakouts for uh, uh, the five volt and three volt uh, outputs as well as ground for, you know, if you're hooking up sensors and you want to expand um, the board. But I love this thing. This is the one I built most of my projects on in the past. Um, you know, if you don't need the high power of an ESP32 or, you know, Bluetooth and, you know, dual core functionality, it's really impressive. I really like this this one. It's one I've, I've got many of these in my uh, portfolio, as I said. Um, you can get these guys for 12 bucks, right? Um, so, I, and, you know, they're they're cheap and they work really well for most projects and they're, they're small. So really like that. So... That's that guy. Uh, the last one I wanted to show you was um, sort of, again, one off the beaten path a little bit, ESP32 cam. Uh, I was originally using this for, well, I used it for a couple things. One was I wanted to actually use it to, as my, not only a camera for my little, you know, Explorer Rover here, but also to control the motor, right? And this is one of the challenges I had. The idea was to mount this, you know, 
uh, in, you know, not on the, the breadboard, but inside here with a battery behind here. And then I had a full Wi-Fi enabled camera, you know, driving robot. I was originally going to actually use this to do some exploration inside my um, ducting and ventilation uh, just to see, you know, how dusty it is, you know, further inside and whatnot. The idea was to tie a string to the back of it and, you know, hang on to it in case it got stuck so I could sort of pull it back out. But anyway, I think um, I like it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very different than all these others because it has a camera on it. There's a micro SD card uh, slot right here so it can record photos on a micro SD card slot. Um, you know, in this case, I've actually built it with the necessary um, pinouts so I can do programming. As uh, as you can see, it doesn't have a USB port, so it you know needs external programming. Um, but the you know, it's it's purpose built, right? It's meant to be a camera ESP32, but it has functionality to do other things. It does have some pins uh, to break break out. Um, I think it's it's very limited. That's one of the challenges. It doesn't have a lot of uh, choice for pinouts. Um, on this guy, so you can't do things like this, uh, but you can use it for other other sensors and whatnot. Um, anyway, I, you know it's hard for me to compare this to all these others because I wouldn't use them for the same purpose. But you know it does what it does and it does it reasonably well. It has the pinouts and it takes reasonably good photos. You can do all sorts of things like store them on the card or push them to, uh, up to the web and display them on other devices. So um, I also use this briefly in uh, the earlier version of this guy uh, the gopro uh, slider project well not, it wasn't a slider at the time it's just a stationary camera it was purposed uh, was to do time lapse photos of my resin 3d prints uh, but that quickly got old and that's you know me never wanting to live be well and leave well enough alone i moved on to building this guy so uh, i'll link all these projects in my um uh, down below so in case you want to look at them and get more information on those projects so anyway, um, yeah, that's that's about it. I mean, there's as I said, there's a lot more microcontrollers out there uh, that do similar things. Some may be better. Um, I've had exposure to all of these, um, you know, and uh, identified sort of what I liked and disliked about all of them. I have some go-tos. I find I do often go back to similar ones for most of my projects because they're easy to use. Um, I think the key is too as well is to, to be mindful of for all of these. As I said, especially with this one, the libraries and how you use those libraries. If you're doing multiple microcontrollers in your own environment, you want to have the flexibility um, of having sort of a single set of libraries that you configure as necessary and not have, you know, pulled off versions for, for you know, separate purposes like this one required you to do, the, the, the C unit. Um, because then it really gets difficult to keep track of where your code is and what project is using which code um, versus having a master library that that is flexible for everything and, and my master library is flexible for all of these except for uh, the wheel terminal um, so I like I like that and I usually try to seek out microcontrollers for that purpose and also just you know I should have said this at the beginning but full disclosure this is the only one that was actually sent to me the rest of them I bought all these myself I haven't had, uh, they were not sent to me by for review or anything else, so I, I don't have any bias about this. I'm just giving you my, my honest two cents about um, how I feel about these things. And I understand I haven't covered everything, but um, hopefully you've gained some knowledge and insight into these and um, maybe helps you make your decisions uh, for you selecting your next option. Anyway, thank you for um, visiting. Um, I would appreciate if you liked what you heard, you know, give me a like, um, subscribe if you want to see more, um, you know, drop in the comments. If you, if you want to see more reviews of, you know, one of these or other things or whatever, and I'll see if I can try to work something out there. Okay. Thank you and have an awesome day. Ciao.